In 1908, Teddy Roosevelt decided not to run for re-election. His immense popularity meant that Americans wanted more of what TR had done in office. The next president of the United States would need to follow in TR's footsteps of reform. Because of this, Roosevelt handpicks his trusted friend, William Howard Taft, to run to replace him and continue his legacy. William Howard Taft was good friends with Teddy Roosevelt and served as the Secretary of War. Roosevelt was so popular that the people overwhelmingly elected Taft to the presidency in 1908. Taft was a hardline conservative, and it was understood and assumed that Taft would execute and continue the reforms of the Roosevelt era. However, while in office, Taft was unhappy. To cope with his unhappiness and the stress of the job, Taft began to overeat. He ballooned to over 400 pounds, making him the largest president in American history. So large, in fact, that Taft once got stuck in the White House bathtub, forcing designers to make a new White House bathtub that could easily fit four people. While he was president, Taft visited the Mission Inn in Riverside. A chair was specially made for him. Here you can see me sitting in the chair. If I'm an average sized guy, you can see how big a guy Taft was. He never felt like the president. He only felt like he was continuing the job that Roosevelt had left for him. Another fun fact about Taft, he is the first president to throw out the first pitch at a Major League Baseball game. One aspect of Roosevelt's presidency that Taft continues is his actions as a trust buster. Taft used the Sherman Antitrust Act to bust over 90 trusts in his four years in office. This has over doubled the number of trusts that Roosevelt was able to shut down in his term in office. However, trust busting was about all that Taft was able to continue from the Roosevelt years. The rest of his policies failed to follow in Roosevelt's footsteps, and here he begins to deviate from Roosevelt's progressive platform. In 1908, Taft had campaigned to lower tariffs on imports, bringing trade prices down. This would have been a continuation of TR's progressive agenda on trade. However, during his presidency, Republican House members passed the Payne Aldrich Tariff. This bill reversed rate reductions on imports, effectively raising tariffs. Instead of vetoing the bill, Taft breaks his campaign promise and signs it. Progressives in the Republican Party and Roosevelt followers feel betrayed. To make matters worse, Taft came out and called the Payne Aldrich Tariff the best bill ever. This angered progressive Republicans and Roosevelt followers. Taft! Another key split from Roosevelt's policy was over conservation. Taft appointed Richard Ballinger as Secretary of the Interior. Ballinger was a wealthy lawyer who disapproved of conservationism. Ballinger sold 1 million acres of coal-rich Alaskan reserve lands. This protected federal property was sold to his big business friends. This outraged progressive Republicans because Taft had sold land that TR had worked so hard to protect. Taft! By 1910, Taft's policies had split the GOP into two factions. Progressive Republicans supported TR's philosophy and wanted further reforms, while conservative Republicans followed Taft and sought to repeal the reforms of Roosevelt. The split over party direction came to a boil surrounding the Speaker of the House, Joseph Cannon. Cannon, a staunch conservative, refused to put progressive bills on the floor of the House for a vote meaning that progressive issues wouldn't even be talked about in the House of Representatives. Despite this lack of professionalism, Taft came out and fully supported Cannon. Progressives in the House of Representatives felt double-crossed and joined with Democrats to strip Cannon of power and have him removed as Speaker of the House. They then rallied around Roosevelt, calling on him to challenge Taft for the leadership of the party. Hey, what do you think you're doing? In 1912, Teddy Roosevelt comes out of retirement and challenges Taft for the President of the United States. But first, he'd have to win the GOP nomination. The campaign between Roosevelt and Taft turns nasty. Each one threw slurs at each other. GOP primary showed Teddy Roosevelt was the voter favorite, but Taft was the incumbent. The incumbent is the candidate who is already holding the office. Teddy Roosevelt's delegates decide to split the party and form the Progressive Party, also known as the Bull Moose Party. They nominate Teddy Roosevelt as president as a third party candidate. The Bull Moose Party got its name from people questioning the health of an older Roosevelt. In reply to these questions, he said, I'm stronger than a bull moose. Roosevelt was so strong and determined to beat Taft that when he was shot by a would-be assassin before a speech in 1912, he said to the crowd, friends, I shall ask you to be as quiet as possible. I don't know whether you fully understand that I have just been shot. It takes more than that to kill a bull moose. 
Roosevelt refused to go to the hospital, and Ashley continued on with his speech for another 90 minutes. Here you can see the x-ray, where the bullet is actually lodged in Roosevelt's chest. All of this led to the election of 1912, one of the greatest elections in history, which consisted of three presidents running against each other. Teddy Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, and Woodrow Wilson. The Republican vote was split between the conservative Taft and the progressive Roosevelt, allowing the progressive Democrat, Woodrow Wilson, to take the election. This election showed that Americans had a mandate for progressivism. By giving 75% of the total votes to progressive candidates, Wilson, a progressive, won overwhelmingly. But Roosevelt came in second, getting 80 more electoral votes than Taft. This election is reminiscent of the 2000 election, an election between Al Gore, George W. Bush, and Ralph Nader. This was a very tight election coming down to a recall in Florida, in which George Bush barely eked out the election over Al Gore. Ralph Nader could have stolen some of the votes which would have allowed Al Gore to become the 43rd President of the United States. With Taft fairly out and Wilson fairly in, Americans were looking forward to another presidency under which progressive reforms would take place.